I am that I am Sarah of Sovereign Mind and biological autonomy, biological freedom, not dependent on an external environment, subject, object, split, collapses, and a bridge forms between humanity and divinity. This is a pre-recording of the July satsang. I will be taking a vacation, a very rare vacation. So I'm getting the July satsang uploaded to YouTube, to you. I take my job very seriously, but it's time to go on vacation. <laughs> so I have a mentor uh, in a body. And uh, I was talking to him a couple months back because I'm no good to you all if I don't have my own mentor and someone I can call and trust and someone who knows more than me. So important. So anyhow, I was talking to him and uh, I've been working with him for 13 years, 13 years. We uh, meet every year and just kind of check in. But he was feeling into what I was talking to him about. And he said, oh my good, he's a, a yogi. And he said, oh my goodness, you know what you're doing? You're creating an ashram with no guru. An ashram with no guru. Oh, I just loved that. He said, you're creating an ashram with no guru. The only guru <laughs> is the Christ consciousness, is the new energy and understanding how it works. New energy is not an entity. It's not a force. It's not energy. It's not just consciousness. It's new energy. It's Christ consciousness. And I got to thinking, what do I want to do for the July satsang? Well, you can't have Christ consciousness and energy and consciousness coming together until you meet God, God self -reala realization until you meet God and realize you are that and have a direct experience expression with God consciousness. So I wrote about my direct experience with God consciousness in this book. I'm going to read it to you. <sighs> I'm going to read it to you because I like that. Um, if you are a newsletter subscriber, I'm going to put my advanced light body dissension notes. It's a 34 minute video I recorded in April. If you are subscribed to the newsletter, it's already in Patreon. But if you're subscribed to the newsletter, you'll also get that in July. And this uh, July song is just for the YouTube subscribers. Are you ready? So this is the book Becoming Syrah. A Modern Self-Realization Story, and it takes place on classic Earth reality from the year 1980 to 2017. 2017. Chapter 19. I am God too. October to November 2017. You know, ungrouping is just a tiny piece of this. We got it out and now we're moving on. <laughs> In October of 2017, after my return from backpacking through Asia and driving out of the collective Crimson Circle Consciousness of Colorado, I ended up in a tiny town called Dixon, New Mexico. The population stands at 926, a number that goes consistently up and down as people don't tend to stay too long. Outside the grocery store, a migrant apple picker sold me a piece of fresh baked apple bread for $2. I opened up the tin foil package and took a bite. It was delicious. I ate a little in the last few days for no reason other than I was in my free energy body, which doesn't elicit hunger. Soon I switched back into my biology, energy dependent body but not before whatever took place completed. On a road trip with my dog, Ollie, we slowly made our way from Colorado to Texas for my mother's 70th birthday in my white pickup truck named Toby. Toby still sits in my driveway, although he doesn't go anywhere but the beach and back <laughs> to surf. I just surf, which is why my hair is wet. I took Toby out for a spin. I hadn't taken him out in a while. 
So we were driving from Colorado to Texas in my white pickup truck named Toby, which now has a camper top with a mattress in the back. It's my favorite way to travel. Yet for a break, I booked a rental home for a week, feeling another major shift in consciousness about to roll through. Fall bloomed before my eyes in a brilliant show of fiery orange and sun-soaked yellow leaves that marked the tree line. A stark contrast that popped like a painting against the sea sky. Crispy brown leaves crunched beneath my feet. The air did not contain a drop of moisture as it stood motionless. The changing leaves served as the perfect backdrop for this experience, of which I have come to know as, more than a year later, the final let go. Appropriate, as it was more of a dissolution of everything I thought I knew, rather than a spring-like bloom into realization. It was more a death of knowledge than an expansion of consciousness. I became empty, not full. It felt a free fall into the inky void as I twisted and spun away from the perceived light. I wasn't going towards the light. I was falling away from it. The bloom would come later. A constant flow of dissolution of knowledge and integration of wisdom running simultaneously that would eventually flow into new life. The final let go is a sensation that flowed through the corners of my consciousness many months before I arrived in Dixon. It is a lighter term for the sacred art of surrender, which has gone out of style as all words of consciousness cycle around like the seasons. Like any major shifts in consciousness, this sensation floated around me, swirling in the ethers of self before making its way into full embodiment. I saw it first in the corner of my eye as a spark of light, a possibility. Then I held it in my hands. I turned it over, feeling it with each sensory cell in my fingertips. Next, I tossed it out. I tossed it out, watched to see if it came back. When it did, the little bolt of lightning flowed into me through my feet bottoms. I writhed in pain, a copy of myself. The wiser of the two sat in the corner of the bedroom, watching the self that was twisting and turning under the bed sheets, freezing next to the space heater in the rented shack. The temperature dropped below freezing outside and the fire had gone out. My dog curled under a blanket at the foot of the bed, a wiser copy of himself watching it all from the other corner in the bedroom. When I look at this moment, outside of time and space, or in human terms, in hindsight, this sensation of folding onto myself was present in many lifetimes. That's the funny thing about realization. I believed in this life there would be a point, a hard line drawn between realized and not realized. I believed it would be some magical moment of shift into bliss before and after. It's rather silly now, and yet here I am writing about a moment in time and outside of it. Before enlightenment, in my mind, was a destination rather than a continuously flowing experience. It was, in limited awareness, a static point on a linear timeline rather than a shift in awareness that is always dynamically in expansion and allowing more of itself to enter, more of the old to dissolve. Now I understand there is no static victory point of realization. 
in which you pinned a medal on yourself. It's far too grand for that while not being grand at all. Grand in a sensational inner experience rather than grand in the physical human notion of it. A superhuman walking on water? Nope. No one will even notice your shift in consciousness unless they too have dared to cross the threshold. For it would be another mirror. And in realization, you no longer need a mirror of another to reflect you back to you. You exist and you can see yourself clearly and perhaps for the very first time know who you are. You do not need a reflection. Yet, when the big shift in consciousness flows in, you realize you were never not realized. And it ripples through your awareness, waves in the ocean of consciousness. For me, that is the working definition of it, of embodiment. Subject always to the changing tides of consciousness. Before... I perceive myself as a little black dot moving along a timeline toward realization. Steps lead up to it, like bringing in parts and pieces of myself, letting go of all group consciousness and the belief systems of any collective. It was a concept that served until it didn't. Then, in the realized state of being, everything appeared to be running backwards, and the view was as such. I realized I was already realized, that I was never not whole, that I never fragmented coming into human form, and this whole time I was simply understanding how I got there, how I found this state of being. The realization ran through every lifetime experience. I began to see beyond linear time how every major crossroad I came across, I was already choosing in awareness of what was to become. I was already so much more conscious than I could even fathom, for I only saw through the eyes of my humanity a limited view that blocked me from seeing how truly conscious it all really was. I saw how amazing I already was, that there was nothing to heal, to fix, to make whole, or to learn. I started to understand why I chose certain things for myself. I understood why things didn't work out or why I sailed through previous experiences unscathed. When I first heard about the final let go, it was from El Moria. He used completely different language for the same thing. The language of consciousness is ever evolving and ever cycling to keep it appearing new, to keep it unweighted by limited perceptions thrown onto it like a rubbish heap. Sometimes the words must be burned like trash until they can resurface anew. Moria called the final let go the sacred art of surrender. Instead of using the language, I am God too, he called it being a vessel for the will of God, an experience described in my first book in great detail. And I wasn't sure what it meant for my human life. I wondered a lot about what would happen to my identity, my independence, my sovereignty, if I simply became a vessel? Would I feel empty and without purpose? Now I realize sovereignty has nothing to do with identity. And I actually would become more sovereignly me as I became this vessel of pure consciousness. The irony is I would become more me in a state of constant motion when I let go of the human identity completely let go of the ego this is the freedom this is what lies outside the zoo this is what ordering off the limited human menu looks like and i do feel empty on occasion until the sensations go quantum 
At first, feeling empty was a bit depressing. I felt I was crossing a desert without being able to quench my thirst no matter how much I drank. Yet I sensed deeply I was making room for a new experience, for living life sans definition. I shifted my perception of emptiness to seeing it as having the space to be me, room to be consistently in motion for the maximum joy experience that awaits us all in new life. Free from the stagnant form of human identity, free from the suffering caused by a fixed human role in a fixed human reality. Purposeless, for sure. Along with the identity, the mission to do anything on earth is stripped in the realized state. Yet it is delightfully delicious to realize there's nothing to do, save, teach, or defend. There is everything to be and become instead. And the word God, so heavy, so laden with belief systems, so tainted. Yet I have no other words to describe what this is for me. So I ask you to go sans definition for a minute or two. For the sake of adventure, for the sake of story, God is my word for the ineffable, a stream of pure consciousness, the energy free space of the I am that I am. I wrote this so many years ago, but I've never read it out loud. <laughs> <sighs> the following is what I could get down on paper from my personal experience that I refer to as the I am God to experience, describing what it felt like to become a vessel for the will of God. It was so personal, and at one point it felt too sacred to write about, so instead I sang about it. I waxed poetic, although I am no good at poetry because simple sentences would never do it justice. The following is written in present tense for it occurred outside of time. This is how I allowed nature to show me the sacred art of surrender, the sacred art of letting go. And then I did, I let go, finally. In the ever present cycle of life, the leaves turn a radiant orange upon the bright blue sky backdrop right before the angel of death appears, gently leading them back to source. The earth below which created them and the earth which will cradle them in decay before the time of rebirth. As Ollie, my dog, and I drive down the winding gravel mountain pass in the early afternoon light, I watch the sparkling Rio Grande flow steady below. The canyon carved by its weaving waters allows us to pass with grace to our destination. I observe the landscape with all my visions, human and divine. With human eyes, I see without the river, there would be no safe passage to the other side of the canyon. There would be no path carved into the crystalline mountain, which bends only to the wisdom of the river and never to the will of human drive. With divine perception, I see I too am carving a canyon through the dense mountain pass that was my humanity with only the flowing river of my soul's wisdom and without the rigid determination that marked my human path for so long. <clears throat> the Rio Grande, which is the name of the river, it just means big river. The Rio Grande or Grande, essential for this land's existence, further represents a perfect reflection of my soul's irreversible flow returning to self, the self I left behind when I crossed the wall of fire from the angelic realms and into the physical human experience for the very first time. The river cannot reverse directions. It flows to its destiny. Destiny is from the Latin to make firm. 
to come firmly into self, big ass self. As I drive across the Grand River and I embrace the fire of forgiveness, I know I will not get burned this time. The waters of the river keep me cool in the fire's wrath, burning up all I thought to be true. And now I know what I am reclaiming has always been mine and mine alone to retrieve. Me in my natural state of being. Me before I ever cross the wall of fire. In that moment on the bridge, I reach to the wall of fire and reclaim my divinity, bringing it to this side of existence. I stare in the face of fire with a smile. I whisper without force. It's been a while, my friend. And eons have passed since I felt whole and no time has passed at all. And I was never not whole. It all folds onto each other, the streams of awareness running concurrently. Later, as the sun melted into the horizon, speckled with trees of the apple orchard before my human eyes, I see with the eyes of God, my divine vision, I too am weaving a path back to source through the sacred art of surrender. This experience is too personal, too sacred to share with anyone. I whispered to myself as I began to sweep into a deep sleep, feeling the divinity spread throughout my humanity, weaving a golden tapestry of who I am perpetually becoming. Inhale. I sense my divinity as a blanket of blackness which has enveloped me at sunset and unwrapped me at sunrise during the past few weeks. Once feared, I laud the darkness now, nowhere to go, nothing to do. Paralyzed in the pitch black space, I can only be. I can rest for the first time in eons. X. Hey, I am relaxed, breathing deeply and steadily, yet my heart beats a million times per minute as I succumb to the black hole enveloping me once again with the sun sinking into the horizon. As I enter the now familiar state, my heart's rhythm slows to a regular beat. And I realized my soul could sense my human desire to paint the picture of this ineffable experience in words. Yet I did not know if it was possible to capture the response. Once you place the firefly in the glass jar, it can only glow a few moments before it too is visited by the angel of death, she whispered in return. I wonder if my imminence can be captured by words or if putting words to it would catapult me back into the density of human experience at first attempt. Not being able to hold onto a thought for more than a second, it vanished into the vortexes of the blackness. What returned was a notion, a nudge of wisdom from within. Let me sing a song instead. I spoke to soul, to source, and the universal language of images and sensations rather than words. Let me sing the song of love, the love that exists beyond the veils of Maya. Let me sing the song of coming home to self. Let me sing of its splendor. The answer came in a little spark sparkle of light that flashed in the dark room. I see it with the eyes of the human and of the di divine combined as the source that is me opens the gates of sharing in the purity of awareness. Thank you. I mouth the words without sound, even later or before, perhaps, well, both. For years, I did not think or know God's source Spirit existed beyond the borders of my own soul. 
I moved from the concept of an external God so long ago. Indeed, I was the only God I knew, blinded completely by the radiance of my own soul. And what a magnificent experience that was. In the fog of the familiar human amnesia, I forgot that in my soul, source flowed too. I am God also. I am God too. I only needed to dip my toes into its crystal cool waters, allowing the convergence to spread so far to the edges that any edge of self, any border between me and them would cease to exist. And I did not lose myself. Even with no identity, I became more me. I did not lose myself. In my divine vision, I placed my bare feet into the liquid gold of the Rio Grande River, a reflection from the sun above, and I remember who I am. I forgot in my human free will experience that source Two existed and we were but one and the same. And we exist as two sovereign points spiraling on an infinity symbol, meeting in the middle and separating on the extremities. In some ways, realization is finding yourself standing in the middle point of infinity and never leaving it. Before I reached the trailhead of my own divinity, I stood upon the threshold of my humanity, the trailhead of forgiveness. I allowed the dragon, which guards its gates, to breathe the fires of forgiveness into every corner of the edges of the universe of me, igniting and destroying <clears throat> any perceived wrongdoing from every lifetime and in between. The greatest of all shames, too, was incinerated the shame of being human. In the tsunami of fire, I embraced my human nature. I allowed myself to be an animal, chasing its desires with reckless abandon. Yet, in this self-given freedom, and with every path that lay open before me, I chose God. And in choosing God, I was choosing me. And in the end, just like anything else, it was never a choice, but a passion that created the path in reverse. And knowing the threshold of forgiveness is marked by the element of fire, and our humanity is marked by the element of earth, then crossing the threshold of my divinity or removing the border that held it locked up so tightly is marked by the elements of water and air. If I had the will to follow blindly the flow of my soul's river of wisdom, the vision of both my divinity and humanity would come to light. They would converge, unite. Then and only then would the opportunity to fly present itself. I did not have to jump off the cliff, I soared. Inhale, the two points spiraling along the infinity symbol meet in the middle once again. They are the merging of human and divine. And now they are the merging of soul and source. So many realities and sensations flow together into the single point of consciousness. Yo soy el punto. Exhale, inhale. When the two connect, they create something beyond love and it is felt anywhere a tiny spark of consciousness exists. Exhale. And what's on the other side of ungrouped?
ungrouping is returning to your natural state of being. And what's on the other side of it is understanding that soul is, its job wasn't to reincarnate, to wisdomize, to find your next karmic lover. It was to get you back home to God, creating that third circle of creation. And soul and source are two very, very different things. But when they meet in the middle of the infinity symbol, where only love exists, the new energy is created. So that's your July satsang. Again, you can get the book here if you're interested in it. Um, I've been talking about <laughs> ungrouping and the difference between soul and consciousness since I had this experience in 2017 because once I had the direct experience meeting God I really knew it wasn't my soul and I knew how it worked I just knew how it worked so here's the new energy creator YouTube sat song we are an ashram with no guru a guruless ashram and we're all students of the new energy of the Christ consciousness. Yeah. Hmm. Your in inimitable self is knocking on your human's door. Now it's time to answer it. That's written on the back of the book. All right. If you're on the newsletter, check your email inbox you will also have the super advanced light bunny notes descension over ascension talking about the difference and how nature um plays into all of this so check your email for the newsletter and if you're just joining us on uh, new energy creator youtube page welcome glad to have you any soft sovereign being is always welcome here you're soft and you're sovereign, you're home. <laughs> Bring your home that's in you with others who are also home. <sighs> All right, I am love with you. I'll be back in August for our next, next satsang and I will have some stories from my long overdue vacation. I'm so excited. All right, guys, 